بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف اللهم أخرجني من ظلمات الوهم وأكرمني بنور الفهم اللهم افتح علينا أبواب رحمتك وانشر علينا خزائن علومك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين الحمد لله we have توفيق to continue our study of discussions of الميزان at the beginning we ask Allah to send his salutation to the soul of Allama Tabatabai and all our great scholars. Today our topic is Mu'jizah, about miracles. Allama Tabatabai in volume one, he has a discussion about Mu'jizah which has two parts. One is about Quran being a Mu'jizah, a miracle. Another is about Mu'jiza itself. I thought maybe we study this first, although he has mentioned this second, but it helps us with understanding Mu'jiza in general, Mu'jiza of our Prophet, which is Quran, and other Mu'jiza that he had, and our uh, other Prophets, they had miracles. There are lots of discussions here that Allama has about the nature of a miracle. So our discussion tonight is starting from page 73 of volume 1 of Arabic Al-Mizan. The title or heading is Ma'na al-ayah al-mu'jiza fi al-Qur'an وَمَا يُفَسَّرُ بِهِ حَقِيقَتُهَا What is the meaning of a sign of God which is a miracle and how it is interpreted? He says there is no doubt that according to the Qur'an we have miracles. Qur'an refers to many miracles. What is a miracle? Before we go to the text, uh, I would like to mention the definition of miracle according to Mutakallamin, the theologians. If you study books of Kalam, like Baba Hadi Ash or Sharh Tajreed, they say Mu'jaza is something which is Kharikul Adah. Amrun Kharikun Lil Adah means an extraordinary act. If something is ordinary, this is not mu'jaza. Mu'jaza has to be an extraordinary act. That a person who claims to be prophet, a person who claims to be prophet, brings. So if someone doesn't claim to be a prophet, then if they do something extraordinary, we don't call it mu'jaza. So for example, if imams do something extraordinary, technically we call it karama, we don't call it mu'jaza. Okay, this is reserved for the prophets. And it has to come with the claim of being prophet because they say, if someone claims to be a prophet, Allah would not give him power to bring extraordinary acts to mislead people, to misguide people. So it should be kharaqun lil It should come from someone who claims to be a prophet. And it should come in accordance with uh, his claim. 
what what do they mean they say you know sometimes extraordinary things happen when someone claimed to be prophet and it was to the opposite yeah so for example they said to Musaylama al kadhab the liar who claimed to be prophet that if you are a prophet we suffer from shortage of water in our well there is no abundant water so do a mu'jizah that we have plenty of water so he split into the well and something extraordinary happened it completely dried out <laughs> but we don't call this mu'jizah yeah because something extraordinary happened but against what he wanted to do so it should be according to his claim plus there is another condition an extraordinary act that a person who claims to be prophet brings and this is in accordance with his claim and he must also challenge others tahaddi means he must say to people that no one is able to bring like this if one person can bring like it it is not mojiza okay so mojiza is something that no other person could bring only people who are supported by allah can bring so has to be extraordinary has to be accompanied by claim to be prophet has to come in compliance with his claim and should come with tahaddi or challenge this is the definition of mu'jiz so allah rahmatullah says that there is no doubt that according to the quran there have been many miracles and in all these miracles what happens is this this is a very important uh, sentence Allah says when we have miracle what happens is that something from supernatural world intervenes in the natural and material world not that there is no causality some people think that modism means that there is no causality there is no cause and effect for example if i go to doctor and take medicine and i take the medicine and i am healed they say this is cause and effect so the medicine has had some uh, impact on my body but if a man of God, for example, prays and I am healed, they think it means that there is no cause. But we say, no, there is cause. Causes are different. Sometimes causes are natural and material. Sometimes causes are supernatural. But there must be cause. Because the principle of causality has no exception. Nothing can happen without cause. If you study philosophy, you know that everything which is contingent needs a cause to give either existence or non-existence so Allah says so something from the world above physical world intervenes when Musa alayhi salam throws the stick and becomes dragon or when Isa alayhi salam gives life to a bird which is made out of the clay or you know revives a dead person or makes a person who is blind able to see there is something immaterial supernatural intervening in this physical world yeah so it is not a kind of illusion that say, there was no dragon and like magic musa just made them think that there is dragon no 
something really happened, but with a cause which was not material. And Allama explains this very well. So, it's not something against aql. Mu'jaza cannot be against intellect, against aql. For example, say, one prophet made mu'jaza and made two plus two five. <laughs> no, this is not possible. And then he says, what some people have tried to do, people who are influenced by science, but in a radical way, they try to, you know, explain every miracle in the Quran in a kind of materialistic way. That is not correct. So, mu'jaza is real, and it's a matter of another cause working, not a material cause. So, he says in order to give a full picture of, or complete picture, as much as time permits, he says we discuss it in few, as few points, in few, he says fast, like chapters, but not big, ch long chapters. So, number one, Quran confirms the principle of causality. I don't want to go into philosophical discussion, but both in Islamic world and outside Islamic world, we have had people who denied causality. Yeah, there are people who say causality doesn't exist. For example, Ash'arites in the Muslim world denied causality. Ash'arites said, when there is fire and the wood burns, they say there is no relation between fire and burning. Just, it's a habit of Allah that when there is fire and then there is wood, Allah burns the wood when there is fire. They say these are two disconnected things. Adatullah jarat. Adatullah jarat. This is a habit of Allah. And sometimes this habit may not happen like when they throw Ibrahim into fire. So it's a matter of habit, no connection. Uh, in the Western in the world, in Western philosophy, also some people deny causality, like David Hume, for example, or occasionalists. So, Quran supports the idea of causality. And in philosophy, we say this is actually self evident that anything that happens must have a cause. The only thing which has no cause is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he is wajibul wujud that is necessary being. He's uncaused cause or the ultimate cause. But anything else that happens needs a cause. And Quran supports that as Aql supports and also scientists. Why scientists look, work hard and look for, you know, explanation for everything? Because they know that nothing happens by chance. Yeah? When there is an illness, for example, why they try to find the cause of the illness? For example, they find there is a virus, for example. If they believe that things can happen without reason and without any cause, then they shouldn't have done research. When Quran talks about life, death, sustenance, things that happen in this world or in the higher world, all is based on accepting causality. So this is one point. The second point is that Quran says that extraordinary things can happen. And Quran talks about some of the things that were extraordinary, some of the things that Moses did, or 
Isa alayhi salam did, our prophet did, Ibrahim alayhi salam for example, Dawood, Sulaiman, all of them had extraordinary acts. And he says, but it must be known that these things that these prophets did as mu'jizah, they were not common, they were not ordinary, but they were not also impossible. They were not muhal or mumtani' bizzat. Yeah? Mumtani' bizzat, like for example, a partner for God, shariq al-bari, is impossible to exist. Or two contradictory things cannot exist together. Yeah? The principle of contradiction, or in Arabic, say, so these are impossible things. These are not subjects of mu'jizah. Sometimes people in the discussion about power of Allah, they say, can Allah make a heavy stone that he cannot lift? <laughs> the answer is that this is impossible and power belongs to things which are possible because if someone is confused we say if Allah has power to make something which he cannot lift then he is weak and if you say he has no power again you say he is weak we say no he has power but it has to belong to something possible to something which is possible for example if you want to employ a teacher of mathematics you can ask him to solve mathematical problems when they have answer, when they are possible. You cannot say, if you show how triangles of triangle are, for example, 200, not eight, 180, we employ you. This person, even if he's the best mathematician, cannot do something which is impossible. The problem is not with his ability. The problem is with this issue. So, mu'jiza is not about something which is impossible. Mu'jiza is possible, but uncommon, extraordinary. And this is why in our intellect, we don't have any problem. In our intellect, there is no proof that a dead, for example, person cannot be revived. Actually, we see always in the nature that things in a spring gain you know, life, or many things are born. Lots of changes happen in the nature. So we are used to these changes. The only thing is that these miracles happen in a very quick and unexpected way. So, for example, Allah says if there is wood, like Asa of Musa, a stick of Musa, it is possible in the natural even process that after many, many years, maybe this wood is dissolved and then becomes body of a dragon. It's possible. But it takes time. It takes lots of preparations, planning. In the case of Mu'jaza, the same possible thing happens very fast with, without any preparation because of intervention of something supernatural but it's possible if it was not possible you could not have th you know thought of it even taking place in tens of years in dunya so knowledge cannot disprove miracles. You know, knowledge cannot prove. If any scientist, you know, says that I can prove that prayer, for example, or mu'jiza has no impact. How can science prove that? 
They cannot prove that only these chemical medicines are giving, you know, help with healing or cure or treatment. They cannot say there is no other thing. The maximum they can say is that this is working. But they cannot say no, nothing else works. Maybe there are other chemical things that work. Maybe there are herbs that work. And maybe there are supernatural things that work. Science cannot deny immaterial things. Okay? There are many immaterial things that have happened in this world and keep happening. People know about things that certain, you know, special powers that, you know, for example, some monks have, some people who have ascetic lives, they have lots of, uh, you know, immaterial power are there. Even in psychology, you know, they have discussion about, you know, many things that you cannot explain physically. He says, you know, some people have tried to explain these things through some, uh, for example, electromagnetic waves and these kind of things. So, so that somehow, again, they bring it close to the physical world. Okay, they, some of them maybe have this, but it's more than that. When someone, for example, is with us and is informing us about what is happening in another part of the world, you cannot say this is physical. So, Quran says that there can be a cause which has impact on these natural things and doesn't give a specific name to that. There can be a cause that has very close relation to this physical world and doesn't give name but says for example for example Allah says to Isa alayhi salam yeah. or for example you create from clay like a statue of a bird and blow into it and becomes a bird with my permission, with my leave. Or give shafa to those who are blind with my permission. Revive the dead with my... This be'ezni is very important. So it means that there is a cause through which the grace of Allah, faithul wujud, the gift of existence comes. He refers to the verse, famous verse three of Surah Talaq. You know, this is very beautiful verse. Some people put on their rings also. Man yajallahu yaj Allah says, whoever has taqwa, Allah makes for him a way out of the problems and gives him sustenance from where he doesn't expect. Whoever puts his trust in God, Allah is sufficient. In Allah Amr. Truly, Allah's affair would reach, means would complete, would be successful. Allah has made a certain measure, fixed a certain measure for everything. 
So this ayah uh, shows that even if ordinary causes are not showing any positive sign, yeah, I am very much troubled. I have lots of you know difficulties and pressures. I need a way out. Nothing in the ordinary causes is showing a way out. Taqwa can help you to find a way out. Taqwa is not a natural thing. Taqwa is not like someone gives you money to solve your problem. Taqwa is supernatural. Yeah? But can have a role. Or tawakkul can have a role. Unfortunately, some human beings only think, uh, see things which are very obvious. Yeah? Only physical things. They can see chemicals and, you know, herbs and these kind of things. But they cannot see that in addition to these things, there can be also other things. In Surah Zumar, verse 36, Allah says, أَلَيْسَ اللَّهُ بِكَافٍ Isn't Allah sufficient for his servant? What does it mean? If someone says, it means that if you have money and doctor and medicine and job and supportive family and community, Allah is sufficient. <laughs> no, this is not what the ayah says. <laughs> means that if Allah finds wise, finds to the maslaha of you and others, despite lacking everything, he can still be sufficient. Yeah? Allah is not encouraging us not to work, not to, I don't know, go to doctor, but if it's needed for example when these things don't work or are not available despite having nothing material completed still he can give us a way out and he can be you know adequate for us Inna Allah baligu amri. At the end of verse 3 of Surah Talaq, Inna Allah baligu amri. Qad ja'ala Allahu li kulli shin qadra. Similar to this, in Surah Yusuf of number 21, Wallahu ghalibun ala amri. Inna Allah baligu amri means his affair would become complete, would reach. Here says Allah is dominant over his affair. He's not defeated. He's not someone that decides to do something but cannot do it. But most of people don't know this. They think Allah's hands are tied and he cannot you know, do things. So. Allah says, Lillahi subhanah. This is the conclusion here. Sabilun ila kulli hadithin ta'allaqat bihi mashi'atuhu wa iradatuh. For everything that happens, Allah has a way to do it or to stop it. Anything that you imagine, he has a way. Even if ordinary things that we are used to it are not available. We should not think that he is limited to the natural causes that we are used to. And say, oh, Allah cannot do anything because the natural causes are not here. So, 
So he has a path, a sabil to everything that he wants. And then he says this can be in two ways. There are two ihtimal, two probability. One is that Allah would reach that thing that he wants من غير سبب مادي وعلة طبيعة is to say that Allah reaches this. For example, Allah wants to give me shifa. Okay? And he has a way. If he wants to give me shifa, he can. Then, there are two possibilities. One is to say, okay, he can give me shifa just by irad, just by willing. Without any other cause being involved, any other material cause involved. The other possibility is to say, no, Allah gives me shifa, but by using a cause which is hidden from me and I don't have knowledge about it. So there are two possibilities that Two ways to understand this. And Allama prefers the second one. He says, no, there is a cause that he uses. Because in general, you know, we have this rule that Allah and Yujr al Umur Allah Asbaba. Allah always uses causes. But when the cause which is known to me is not available, don't think that he runs out of causes. He has other things to use. These are like instruments. He has many instruments to use. So, the ayah which says, قَدْ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ Allah says it means that Whatever happens, he has a way to cause them. Lots of connections are there for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You think that only we have to use, for example, this medicine for this treatment. But he has lots of other things to use to give you this shifa. So he says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, جَعَلَ بَيْنَ الْأَشْيَاءِ جَمِيعًا اِرْتِبَاطَاتٍ وَاتِّسَالَاتٍ Allah has put lots of links and connections between creatures and therefore whenever he wants, he can reach them from any angle. You know, like for example, I think if I want to go to this address, there is one way. But if someone has designed this city in the way that if he wants to reach there, can use thousands of ways. There are underground ways, you know, there are maybe overground ways, you know, there are lots of other ways that I think sometimes through the houses there are ways. I don't know, I just know one way. But someone who is familiar knows other ways and someone who has planned knows many ways. And then he refers to some verses of the Quran, for example, وَإِن مِنْ شَيْءٍ إِلَّا عِنْدَنَا خَزَائِنُ The famous ayah about treasures. Allah says there is nothing except its treasures are with us and we only send down in a fixed measure. وَمَا نُنَزِّلُهُ إِلَّا بِقَدَرٍ Ma'lum. And he continues. He then reaches uh, to this ayah. ذَلِكُمُ اللَّهُ رَبُّكُمْ خَالِقُ كُلُّ شَيْءٍ It is him, your Lord Allah, the creator of everything. 
اور ما من دابت اللہ و آخد المناسیت سو ہی سیز دیٹ اٹ شوز دیٹ اللہ سبحان و تعالی ہیز کریٹیڈ ایوری تھنگ اینڈ دے آر آل سب میسیو ٹو ہیم دے آر آل لسننگ اینڈ اوبیڈینٹ ٹو ہیم اینڈ ہی کین ریچ دیم اینڈ ہی کین یوز دیم اینڈ ہی کین انفلوئنس دیم ان مینی ڈفرنٹ ویز دیٹ وی ڈونٹ نو So, at the same time that Qur'an supports and affirms general principle of causality between material things, Qur'an also teaches us that the system of existence in the material world can be run through habitual or ordinary things and means or extraordinary means and things there is no need to be only one way so sometimes the natural or ordinary causes are there but they don't work because something else has intervened they put Ibrahim in fire and fire should burn Ibrahim But Allah has a way to bring something to stop this. So he can stop natural causes. And when natural causes are not working, he can make them work by bringing other things. So it's in his hand. The third point is that Quran attributes everything to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and even the effectiveness of things which are material are according to his will nothing independently works so that you can say because I have medicine I am healed Or because, for example, I have, for example, I don't know, planted good seeds and I am looking after my farm, I'm going to have good harvest. No. You have to know. that these existential causes are not independent it's not that if they are then it's finished you know for example this i hope this example helps you you know if i have a gun and i sh- for example you know shoot then when the bullet goes out i have no control Yeah, even if I regret, oh, someone is there, I didn't know someone is there, you know, it's going to kill that person. I cannot do anything. Allah is not like this, that if he, you know, initiates something, then the process starts and <laughs> he cannot then stop it. It's not like this. Even if the bullet... hits that person if Allah decides cannot go inside his body or goes inside his body may not kill him so we we have accepted the principle of causality and Quran supports that but we have to know it's much more sophisticated than just such simplistic thing that okay you know things are uh, given role and then they have to run like machine you know automatically and he just can watch them and he cannot do anything Allah Surah Araf 53 creation and command are for him which Mullah Sadra has a special interpretation for this means two sides of creation One is Alam Amr, 
which is for mujarradat in material thing one is alam khalq which is for material things both of them are for him lillah ma fi samawati wa ma fil ard real ownership of whatever is in skies and the earth belongs to him lahu mulku samawati has kingdom of the skies and the earth kullun min indillah everything is from him so these are different verses which show that everything is owned by him no one has any partnership with him and he can use them and run them as he wills and no one can do anything unless he permits no one even i cannot use my eyes unless he has given me permission to use my eye not legislative permission i mean generative because we may disobey his commands when they are legislative yeah like amr nay but when it comes to takwin no one can disobey he refers to some verses about izn for example surah baqarah verse 255 lahu ma fi samawati wa ma fi al ard man dhal ladhi yashfa'u 'indahu illa bi izn everything in heavens everything in earth belongs to him so who can intercede without his permission or thumma stawa 'ala al arsh yudabbil al amr ma min shafi'in illa min ba'd izn no one can intercede except after he gives permission so every cause has gained its causation because of him giving this and granting this to them they are not independent and this is uh, used by saying ezn and when we say is then it shows that there is a way for him to stop is does not make sense unless the one who gives is permission could stop yeah if there is someone that who can just give permission and cannot you know stop then this is not true as so the conclusion of the third point is this an fi kull sabab mabda'an mu'athiran muqtadiyan lit-ta'thir in every cause there is something that is giving it the causation and helps with bringing that effect nothing can work except it's given permission by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then point 4 uh, maybe i just mention it but uh, explain it next session inshallah the point 4 point 4 is that the souls the spirits of anbiya this is a very important point that allama makes and in some lectures about a spiritual aids i have explained this the soul or the soul of the prophets has a role in their mu'jiza when ibrahim alayhi salam ask allah how do you revive the dead arni kayfa tuhyi al mawta Allah made Ibrahim able to revive those birds so the spirit of Ibrahim was involved and Ibrahim gave them life the soul of Isa is involved the soul of Musa the soul of our prophet is not that anbiya pray and a mu'jiza happens Allah brings mujizat through their own spirit so they occur in the channel of grace of allah coming so allah uses them 
for this. This is a very important point that inshallah we will explain next session. And this is why, you know, I always say for spiritual tools like dua, like tabassul, like tawakkul, like ziyara, the soul of the person who uses this tool is very important. Who is making this dua? Who is making this ziyara? Who is making this tawakkul? Depending on the spirit or soul of the person, the power is different. If you give a gun to a person who is very experienced or not experienced, young, old, whatever, gun has certain reach. You cannot, you know, double it if you are, you know, more experienced. Yes, you can use it properly or you can miss the target, but you cannot make a gun which is made to, for example, shoot 10 kilometers to shoot 20 kilometers. But dua is a weapon of mu'min. mu'min. How much this dua can reach? It's not fixed. It depends on the person who makes the dua. Some people, their dua would not reach anywhere. Some people, their dua can reach hundreds of years later. Some people's dua would not affect even one insect, some people do affect millions of people. Because the soul of the person who uses this spiritual tool is important. So inshallah in the next session, we continue with the discussion about Mu'jizah from point four. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen.